Hey guys, it's been a while since we've been able to do an in-depth research-based video to help bring you guys the information that you need um, to be a great Cane Corso owner, find a good Cane Corso puppy, the works. So we're bringing you a three-part video series, okay? Because we originally filmed this and it was actually an hour long and as a mom, I don't have time to sit down and watch TV for an hour, never mind YouTube. I know some of you guys uh, luckily have that luxury, but many of us don't. So I wanted to break this down into three different parts, okay? So we're gonna launch them over the next couple days. And basically we have 28 questions in total where we are gonna help you guys find good breeders okay so these are 28 questions that you can ask any Cane Corso breeder to help you determine if it's worth investing your money in them for your next puppy if you guys haven't been watching all of our pups are now reserved we're not planning on having another litter until late next year depending on Phoenix's heat cycles because summer is just so hot we can't get the pups out as much as we want to for socialization and outdoor play because you know they don't do as well in 100 degree weather since corsos are sensitive to heat so we're hoping that the stars align and we can have a fall litter um, if you are interested in getting one of our pups we are um, asking you to go to our website which is listed here www guardianconecorsos.com and fill out a puppy application and let us know that you are interested in our next litter. We don't have um, the details of our new program up because we are going to be making some changes, um, but we will do a video to announce uh, that. And, you know, once we get the dates down and we confirm that we are going to go ahead, we are going to start taking deposits. If we have enough deposits, we will definitely go ahead with another litter. Because I know some of you guys have reached out and definitely appreciate the program that we're doing, the education that we're bringing you all, and you feel comfortable getting a puppy from us. That is why we do it. Um, so yeah, we will definitely keep you guys in the loop on that. But if you're planning on getting another pup or a new pup before later next year, we want to make sure that you are always empowered as a buyer to weed out the good breeders from the bad ones, okay? And let's just start off by saying there is no perfect breeder, okay? There's no perfect parent, you know, we're all imperfect. Whether we like it or not, narcissists may not believe us, but no one is perfect. So you wanna find a good, reputable breeder that meets what you're looking for, okay? Because I would say, there are many different types of breeders. They're not good for everyone, but there's some that are best matched with certain types of people, depending on what they're looking for. If you were to come to us and say, hey, we're looking for, you know, a extremely high drive farm working Corso. I'm going to say, you know what, don't put a deposit down. We may have one in this next litter, but you know, it, it all depends on, on temperament testing. You know, I'm gonna probably send you to one of my favorite farm breeders in California, Brownhaven Connie Corsos, because they actually farm and work their dogs all day, every day, and they do the traditional work still that was done in Italy with their dogs, okay? so. If you're looking for a serious farm working dog, would send you there. If you're looking for a top show dog, you know what? We actually had some great uh, picks. Um, but if you're like, no, I want to spend, you know, top of the line dollar, I'm going to send you to somebody like Wendy Pines. I believe she's in Wyoming you know, because she's done show dogs for years and she can help be a better mentor than we may be able to be, you know, but her pups definitely cost more than ours 
And I think a lot of the times they're co-owned and cannot be bred. You know, we are basically a breeder that focuses on family, dogs with temperaments that match what you're looking for, um, that can be shown, that can be bred, you know, but we're more of a generalist breeder focusing on dogs that are great for families, good temperaments, you know, um, and we do a lot of the work to help set you up for success. So that's kind of our niche. But if you're looking for something specialized, we're not the best breeder for you. And we may not know breeders that have pups available. So people have been coming to me, hey, can you recommend a breeder? I've tried contacting everyone I know and no one has pups. So I was like, okay, let me make a video on how I go about determining if a breeder is worth sharing or not with people I know. Because hey, my name and reputation's on the line. I'm not gonna recommend somebody um, unless I know for sure the program they're running or I'll say, you know what, this breeder is supposedly good, do your research. Instead of you having to figure out how to do your research, that's what this video series is about. All these questions will help you figure out, you know, are they a reputable breeder? Are they, you know, raising a puppy in an environment that best suits what you're looking for? And third, are these good, healthy pups? Okay, so that's our three-part series we're bringing to you. And we'll just jump right in um, to the first round of questions in today's series to make sure that you can weed out um, good breeders from the bad, okay? Because despite what we all like to believe, there is no discounts, there is no deals, you get what you pay for. So if you are investing in a dog, you wanna make sure that you're you know, making a smart investment You know, if you're choosing to buy a puppy. So let's dive in. Question number one, okay? Breeder experience. This one is hard because it's a shot against me. We are newer to actually breeding, but it's a two part question. So breeders experience, why are they breeding? Okay. And how they plan on improving the breed. That's the first question you wanna ask somebody because a lot of times they won't be able to answer in a way that makes you feel comfortable because let's be real, cha-ching! I would say most people are getting into breeding because they think, oh my gosh, these dogs are selling for two, 3,000 a piece, or I'm gonna have lots of puppies, sell them at one to $2,000 a piece, and I'm gonna be rolling in the dough, you know, in addition to my full-time job, okay? I have a whole video breakdown planned on what we spent and how much money you can actually make breeding. And if you do it right, it ain't that much. If you do it wrong, you can actually make some good cash, okay? So there are people breeding for the money and you can make money, but it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get a good dog because Corsos are super, super sensitive to their environment, to their experiences. So, well, for some breeds, you can, you know, put the bare minimum in and still get a good dog. I really don't know if that's true for Cane Corsos, okay? So you wanna find out from the breeder, what is their experience? Why are they breeding, you know? There is no right answer to this question, but you should get a sense of they're passionate about the dogs. They've had some sort of experience that's just made them want to breed, make the breed better. You know, how are they making the breed better? Are they really smart at genetics? You know, getting a consistent look. Are they really good at temperaments? Are they really good at show dogs, working dogs? You want to get a taste of why they're in the business because you may have a good breeder, but they may not be making dogs that are the best fit for you. So this one question can help you decide whether you should continue in asking them possibly these 28 questions, um, you know, or 
you know what, that's wonderful. What you're doing is awesome. Do you know any breeders that maybe specialize on this? Because this is what I'm looking for. If a breeder is like, oh, no, we do that. I'm great. You know, and they're constantly trying to be everything. Red flag. Keep it moving. Because they should not be blindsided to the fact that they're not the best breeder for everybody. Okay? So... That's definitely something you want to make sure that your breeder is open and honest. Okay, so that's question number one. Question number two, again, follow suit. What are the pros and cons of your line? Oh, okay. Well, we're really good at this. We're really good at this. You know, we don't quite have this. So like, they call it kennel blindness if you're not able to be a breeder that's open and honest about you know some opportunities that you may have to improve okay so you know it is hard to say you're not good at something so maybe uncomfortable or awkward for the breeder to share that but they should be able to tell you something that's an opportunity for them instead of just saying we are amazing we're so good at everything you know, they should be able to recognize their strengths and their weaknesses. And this may be about their dogs. Okay, so, you know, um, our strengths were definitely our dogs' chests, shoulders, all wonderful in every single dog. Okay, that's definitely a strong point physically of our litter. Not all of our dogs had the best top line or angulation most of them actually did though so we actually did very well physically um and we had a wide variety of temperaments um but we have some weird habits you know um that came out and you know i guess carried on from our our puffs so you know there's just all sorts of things that you can talk about with your breeder on things that you know, are awesome about their breed and some weird quirks that happen. Um, in our case, one of the big criticisms that we got was we're breeding two colors that don't have any black in them, which are considered dilutes. So yes, that is a weakness. All of our pups have, you know, are going to likely have to deal with points in time where their fur will be thinned out, you know, where they've gotten their shots or, their immune system is weakened temporarily. You know, any dog that has blue in it, that's a Corso, is likely to have more skin issues. And if you just search online, the breeder that we got Logan from, so Vrana Connie Corsos, has a great article on why you actually should not consider getting a blue dog. And so the only reason is really skin issues. If anyone tells you that there's other health issues, um, I haven't really found any proof of that, but from our research, if a breeder continuously just breeds for a certain color, you know, you want to stay away from them too. So you definitely want someone that has a variety of different colors, you know, depending on the size and amount of dogs in their pack, but they're, you know, not necessarily focus on, oh, we're only doing black dogs or we only want to sell blue dogs because those are the most popular dogs. Well, guess what? They want to sell the most dogs. What does that tell you? Their motivation is money, okay? So you definitely want someone who's open, honest, transparent with a good reason for breeding, okay? So that's question one and two. Question number three is... The breed history, okay? How many litters have they had? What's the history of the parents that will be having the puppies? Or maybe they have multiple pairing options. What are the history of the um, parents of the puppies of each litter that they'll be having? Do they have differences? Which one would they recommend for you? Okay, so... You know, is there any health issues that they've had before? Have any of their pups ever had cherry eye? Again, cherry eye is something that can happen just from seasonal allergies, so it's not necessarily a knock on a breeder at all. But you want someone, again, that's honest, that you can trust as your breeder, who's going to tell you things. If you have a litter where, you know, 
9 out of 10 pups had cherry eye, that's probably not something you want to, you know, get a dog from. But are breeders that are having those issues going to tell you that? Probably not. So you really got to try and have Skype conversations and person conversations, see if the breeder is telling you the truth or if they're like constantly looking up you know, fumbling to answer questions, you know, have these conversations at least over the phone. Because by text, email, you're giving them a chance to think and come up with good answers, okay? So question number four is very related to the breeding history of that breeder. But, you know, again, like we mentioned, you need to know the color history. Are they always breeding blue, 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 and blue? Are they always breeding black, 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 black? You know, there should be a variety of colors throughout the parents, the grandparents, great grandparents. It shouldn't always be the same color, especially when it's a dilute, which is any of the Corso colors with blue, such as Formentino, blue, blue brindle. There should be some dogs that are black, chestnut brindle, red, fawn, you know, you want to have a variety of colors in the lineage, okay? Um, another important thing to talk about is DQs. Is there any disqualifications, aka DQs, that have happened? You know, a big controversial subject is color DQs. I'm seeing more and more breeders confidently walk out there and say, yeah, look, I have an Isabella Tawny and we're breeding them. That's a DQ color. Or, you know what, I have the Rottweiler tan or the blue and tan, you know, uh, look, and I'm breeding them. We'll not get into that today, you know, because I definitely think that's a whole political discussion, but you just wanna know your lines. And there is a website, um, the Connie Corso Pedigree, website which often breeders will post pictures so you can see the lines way way back and you want to make sure that you're go you know going into some of the the best lines um which actually would make a great video topic so i'll try and do some research and talk to some people on what the best original lines are and how far you can trace your breeders dogs back to and to be honest, if you're doing all the work, run from your breeder. They should know their lines. They should know their pedigree. They should be able to tell you, yeah, you know, we have, for example, in our dogs, we um, root back to Belmonte, okay, which is a very good line to have dogs from that first came to, a, to America from Italy. So, you know, you want... Your breeder should be able to answer those questions and you want to fact check them because you know, it's the one thing I learned, you got to look out for yourself, okay? And that's why so many people will say, do your research, do your research. Because let's face it, these dogs aren't cheap. You want to make sure it's a great investment, especially if you want to breed or show or get something out of your investment other than a wonderful companion family dog which Connie Corsos are okay um, question number five you want pictures okay do they have pictures of past puppies what they look like growing up do they know if any of their puppies have Instagram accounts can you get the names follow them talk to those owners you know see what their dogs look like from puppies one-year-old two-year-old three-year-old Connie Corsos don't stop growing till three you know, just the other day I was looking back at pictures of Logan when he was two and I see him now and I'm like, what? You know, they stop growing in height, but they fill out from two to three. And man, I cannot believe the amount of change I've seen from year two to three. And we're not even done year three. So Logan has really expanded. So you definitely want to, you know, get some insight because that will help you see how their dogs turn out, how they look like when they grow up, what line is stronger, the mom, the dad, 
you know, unless it's their first time putting those lines together, you know, unfortunately you're not going to necessarily know what you're going to get, but you can look at some of the litter mates, you know, um, or get to know more about that line or the breeders in that line's history um, to see if other dogs born from those lines have been champion dogs or anything else like that, which will make you feel more comfortable in your decision. Again, depending why you're wanting to get a Corso because every breeder is not the best match for everyone else. Okay, number six, registration. Okay, I gonna do a whole video on this one and maybe I will, but in America, the only registration that actually matters is AKC registered puppies, okay? AKC only accepts AKC registered dogs. They don't accept ICCF. They don't, actually, I think you can get some um, recognized from the other national clubs if you're going to import. But if you're not importing and the dogs were born in America, they should be AKC registered, okay? And since I do not have all the information on that, I will do a video on it. So if you're interested in that and you're not already subscribed, definitely subscribe and stay tuned for a video on different worldwide registrations, okay? So if you don't care about showing your dog or breeding, you don't necessarily need registered pups. But one thing I always tell everyone is you want a purebred Corso, okay? You don't want a Corso mix necessarily. Although I do know of some excellent Corso mixes, we just don't have a lot of research on temperaments and how they turn out. A Corso has one of the strongest bite strengths in the world out of every dog. You mix that with an aggressive breed who actually likes to fight, unlike the Cane Corso, you got a weapon on your hands, okay? So highly recommend making sure you get a purebred Corso if you're looking for a family dog as well because their bite strength is extremely powerful and a bite done aggressively is going to cause some serious damage. I think the research I did before we got Corsos there was about two or three Corso attacks and all of them resulted in death. So that's why some people refer to the Cane Corso as finishers. They never ever like to fight, but if they should happen to fight, it's not good, okay? So that's why I recommend getting a purebred Corso unless you know what you're doing, you understand dog language and all that types of things because if you do get something that's a mix, you know, bad, recipe connection could be a lethal weapon. They're very, very big dogs, okay? Um, question number seven, you wanna go in person and meet the parents. Um, you just need to see what they look like. I can make Logan look beautiful in photos, beautiful in videos for the most part. He also has some extremely, sorry Logan, I love you but some extremely ugly faces where he's just like, oh, a big baby, you know? So you really need to see the size of them, what they look like. I don't know if it's time to Photoshop pictures of their dogs, but some people may. Um, some people may tell you that their parent is one dog, but they never show it to you. How do you know? When I register my dog, I'm just typing it out on paper. There's no real system that proves this dog is a parent unless you're claiming it's an, you know, a parent of many, many dogs and then they do a DNA test. Well, again, my puppy is not getting a DNA test. So even if your dog is getting a DNA test as a sire, there's still no proof it's my dog's parents. So I highly recommend you go to a breeder that can show you both dogs in person. Unfortunately, we didn't follow that advice because it's very hard to do with many people, you know, breeding their dogs and studying them out and shipping the semen. So I think Logan's sire is in Ohio at a different kennel. 
Um, Phoenix's sire, ironically, might be in Ohio now too, but he was originally in Florida. So we never got to meet them or see what they look like, but we looked at pictures, you know, and again, we're pretty sure that they're the parents of our dogs. We met the both moms of the dogs and we trust the breeders from all the questions that we asked. But, you know, just let me know the truth that you definitely want to try and see what you can in person. But there really is no way to know unless you see it happen, you know, where they mate. Uh, we actually filmed our mating video but never posted it because it's quite intense. It's not something you ever want to see. And there's some weird people out there. God, so we just never posted that. But, you know, our dogs are the only two dogs we have. And they're just in love and a bonded pair so yeah but people that own multiple dogs can claim one dog is the, the parent you know or the sire when maybe they're not so we've seen actually quite a bit of that happen and it's really hard to enforce so i'm not even sure what akc could do but you know people that are doing big business get a lot more eyes on them than the independent breeders so you know keep that in mind going on a rant here so lastly question number eight can i see a copy of the contract originally when we were shopping for corsos we saw some strict contracts scared the crap out of us why is this person so controlling i'm just spending all this money for a dog it's mine leave me alone no okay good breeders have serious contracts because they love their dogs they pour their heart soul time blood tears you know, into their pups, they want to make sure they're going to a good home. They want to make sure you're not going to crossbreed it and create lethal weapons. Okay, so strict contracts actually are a sign of really good breeders because they care more about their dogs than your deposit. Okay, so if you find somebody that's, oh yeah, we don't care, you know, we don't even have a contract, run for your life. They just are in it. For the money and you want a contract that protects you and the breeder okay both parties should be protected you know if you haven't already seen it we have a whole video that breaks down puppy contracts give it a watch if you haven't it has some great information in there on how to make sure you're getting a good negotiated contract so definitely review the contract because it's a huge telling sign of what the breeders motivations are how much they care about their dogs you know how involved they're going to be if they offer lifetime support all of those things are really really good depending again what you want to do with your corso lastly question number nine references okay you want to talk to people that have had dogs from this breeder if it's their first litter, you want to talk to people that have known this person, known their dogs, can say, yeah, you know what, these guys are a real deal, they really care, they've put a lot of time and effort into their dogs. You know what, it may not be um, someone that you would think of, but their trainer you know, if they can give you their trainer's information. Oh yeah, you know, this person, I tell them, you know, to do this with their dogs, they actually do it, you know. So a lot of people are a lot of talk, no action. If you get a reference from somebody's trainer and they say, yeah, this person actually really does a good job with their dogs, probably gonna have good puppies temperament-wise. So another option is calling their vet. Who's their veterinarian? Oh yeah, these people always put their dogs first. You know, if their dog needs something, 100%, they're gonna spend the money, take care of their dogs, highly, you know, recommend them. So those are all options for, for references. They don't just have to be, you know, people who have bought puppies from them, um, you know, or friends, things like that. Instagram has hashtags, you know, 
look up your breeder's hashtag, see what's out there. Search in Google. There are a lot of breeders out there who've had some unhappy customers and you don't know whose side is correct, but you definitely want to empower yourself to know the breeder's past. Sometimes customers are outrageous, um, but your breeder should be able to tell you, you know, their point of view without hopefully getting heated and being honest about things, maybe where they went wrong. But basically those are the first nine questions out of our 28 on how you can first assess a breeder, okay? That will get you to the stage of, yeah, I'm comfortable putting a deposit down, you know, for a dog, possibly, okay? Um, I'd highly recommend waiting before you put a deposit down but sometimes you just don't have the option with some of the top breeders because their dogs are in high demand. They don't need you. You need them. So, you know, if you can wait, wait. If not, you know, you can ask these questions and probably a lot of questions in part two of our series um, to make sure you're comfortable and then, you know, put your deposit down. So we'll wrap up video one. And stay tuned if you're not already subscribed. Again, subscribe to our channel to see our follow-up video two of three in the series launching in a couple days. And um, again, if you guys found any value in this, you have any other questions that we might have missed, comment below, give us a thumbs up, like this video, you know, or if we're missing anything or you don't like us, let us know in the comments too, all right? Thank you guys for tuning in. And, you know, if there's any other topics you guys want us to cover, always include them in our comments. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day.